Have you got wind? Then you need a wind turbine, and you might need a specialist way of carrying the wings. In this review we're looking at the Scheuerle wing transporter in the colours of Onroad and Wiesbauer. Firstly we'll unbox the Onroad version. And the first box out in this version is for the Mercedes-Benz Actros tractor. And then there are two boxes for the Scheuerle transporter. These trays are factory sealed so firstly it's a job for the knife. And when we separate the trays the parts are wrapped either in soft paper or they're shrink wrapped. The instructions for the model are included with the Actros. And the Actros is nicely wrapped in its own black foam rubber. The Wiesbauer box is altogether much longer. And inside this one we have the same two boxes for the transporter. And there's also a long piece of packaging for the wing. Once again the packaging is all nice high quality. A nice touch with the Wiesbauer is the inclusion of a numbered collector certificate. And both models have the same manual for the Scheuerle Intercombi transporter. The manual's fine, although page 6 does have an error on it. It shows the directions of the modules wrongly when they connect to the adapter. For the main assembly we'll use the Wiesbauer. And to start with the end of the modules with the locking pins are the ends that connect to the adapter. Before we fit them we need to attach in some locking clips. And these press in although they are quite tough. Next we'll join on the adapter to the other ends of those locking clips. And you finalise the connection by using the locking pin underneath. So here we are with both modules connected to the adapter. And a similar kind of system is used for attaching the power pack at the end. Next we need to fit some cover plates to the steering mechanism and they just drop into place. Then we can move on to fitting the counterweights. And we'll start by fitting a big plate at the back. And you can secure that in position by tiny small pins. These are a bit fiddly to get in but they do stop the plate sliding about. On top of that we then need to mount a stack of plates. And if you think they get held together by long pins, you're absolutely right. Then we go to the other end of the transporter and we secure the sliding plate in the same way. There's a number of pins supplied with the model but you might need to work out best how to use them to fit the plates. On top of the sliding plates we then attach two more stacks of plates. And again we use yet more steel pins to stop them sliding about. After that we can now use the transporter to carry the wing. It has an adapter plate fitted which hooks over at the top and then you pin it at the bottom to hold it in place. Once we've done that the assembly of the Wiesbauer is complete. The on-road version gets assembled in exactly the same way, but one difference is that this one has a towing bar to fit. There's a few parts to it and the first thing we need to do is to screw in an adapter to the end of the module. And on the review model the screw was a little bit loose fitting. The tow bar has a few parts and we've assembled those and then we can push that into the adapter. Once that's done you secure it in place with a large pin. If you want to assemble the model you can also attach a steering bar and then the module steering will move when the draw bar moves. Here we've put it in but not attached it to the steering and you'd really need to do that before you assemble any of the model. The Actros comes with a choice of fifth wheel to fit different sized kingpins but it also didn't want to be left out in the assembly phase so there's a few things to fit and we'll start with the door mirrors. And the thing to note is that all of these parts are loose fitting in the holes. We don't like gluing things on cranes etc so we use a little bit of plastic putty pushed into the holes to keep the parts in place. And if you trim it up it can make a neat job. There's a small fold down ladder which attaches behind the equipment tower and that just clips into place. And then you fold it over back on top. There are towing hitches front and rear and there's also the ballast box to clip into the fifth wheel. Once that's done the last bit of assembly to do is to attach the transporter to the tractor.
For the detail, we'll start with the big Actros tractor. And the chassis is very detailed with all its transmission parts. Overall, it's high quality and there are different tyres on the driven and steering axles. Up on top, there's a nice light bar and air horns. And there's the famous Mercedes-Benz logo with the Actros grille. The cab looks great in this colour and it's enhanced by the very small graphics, which are very sharp. Behind the cab there's a very detailed equipment tower and there are coiled lines. And on one side there's that big distinctive grille, which looks really good. At the back there are nice wheel arches, lights and number plate. The ballast box seems to be an all plastic part with nice texturing of the tarpaulin. The Shoyola modules are very robustly modelled. And a particular highlight is the very detailed graphics. That includes the Shoyola name on the counterweight slabs. And the on-road and style names are also there. The adapter part also has a detailed generator. And the cover plates on the modules have a very detailed texture. Perhaps the most detailed part is the power pack with all its different grills and textures. And it's a very finely modelled and detailed part. The adapter looks good too, and the gearing and slewing motors are modelled. The Wiesbauer also looks great with its highly detailed graphics, and it also includes the wind turbine wing. This is an engineered plastic part with a very nice profile. The modules that make up the transporter have top quality engineering. They roll along very smoothly and as you can see they have excellent sprung suspension. The six line module has proportional steering and the steering mechanism works really well. As you can see the module turns a corner nicely and there's also steering on the two line module. But the best test is when the transporter is fully assembled and here you can see that it steers beautifully. But if you try this at home, just be careful that the big wing doesn't inadvertently cut your head off. The counterweight on the six line module has a variable position and it smoothly slides from the end to the middle and back. With the blade attached, you've got some rotational movement at the adapter, so the blade can be angled into a lifting position. The mechanism is a bit stiff, but it does work. And you can also adjust the angle of the wing. You can have it horizontal or you can have it in one of two angled positions. The hydraulic ram that controls this is friction free, so to hold the wing in one of two angled positions, you insert a steel pin. Moving to the on-road Actros, and it has link steering, but as you can see, the range of movement is limited. The Actros rolls along very nicely in a straight line, and if we want it to turn a corner, we have to set the steering, but it will only turn a shallow corner. But as we always say, something is better than nothing. This model also has the drawbar and it's a nice touch that it's spring loaded. You can load up a wing with adapter onto the on-road version and it just hooks over in the normal way. But surprisingly, the adapter on this model isn't drilled to take the two steel pins at the bottom. This Shoyola transporter is a specialist piece of equipment and IMC Models has made an excellent job of it. These two limited edition versions look great in their colour schemes and they both make very interesting display pieces. So if you want something that's interesting and really good, these models are excellent. Mm -hmm. 